I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja, and today we're making this adorable bee-themed mini wallet. It's part of a whole set of bee-themed things I've made lately. I'm going to be using this when I go to QuiltCon in February, so I can have my business cards with me and a place to keep business cards that people hand me. So today we're going to make this wallet out of these fabrics. Well, not these. These over here. So this is to show you that the inside of the wallet can be very exciting if you want it to be. On this wallet, I took the pieces that were cut from the outside and put them inside and included a lot more color because I just adore color. On this one, I decided to go a little bit more um, mature, if you wish. And on the inside, I, um, since when is hollow mature? I don't know, but I love this stuff. It's holographic faux leather. And I used an extra piece of fabric, not in my original instructions, to actually back the faux leather here so that I would have that black on the inside. And this is just a magnet. I have two of them in here to hold it closed while I show things on video. But most of the time, this is just in a pocket, so it holds clothes on its own. Of course, you can actually add a proper magnet closure here or even a snap or a button and loop. You can always add to the patterns in the way that you like. This wallet is all made with quilters cotton. And unfortunately, the design has just not held up the way I had hoped it would in quilters cotton. So whatever you choose to make this wallet out of, the outside needs to be a material that's not going to fray and ideally would be able to be cut with your Cricut. Now you may not have a Cricut and that's totally fine. One, you can make this wallet by hand cutting stuff. That would be, you put this pattern on top of your fabric, you attach them to each other with glue or tape and you use an X-Acto to cut everything out. Otherwise you can just make this wallet without doing the cutouts and you can still have a little mini wallet. But if you're going to do the cutouts, which is what I'm going to assume, this fabric on the outside needs to not fray. So here we have faux leather, which is Cricut brand. And over here, which is what we're using today, this is a glitter canvas. It happens to be Eversone brand. They sent this to me and I, I just love it. I did a little sample here and you can see how well that cut out. And I stuck the pink behind it so we could get an idea of what our project was going to look like today. I always love doing a tester. And in the files for this, you will find this little B tester. So you can make sure whatever material you're using is going to work okay. And you get all the settings right before you start working on a bigger scale. The outside of the mini wallet is really what benefits from being cut on the Cricut and using that precise fine point blade. But all the other pieces, the backing and the pocket pieces are just rectangles and they are super easy to cut out with your ruler and your rotary cutter. Today I'm going to cut out everything with the Cricut, but don't feel that you have to do that. Do what works for you. If you feel very comfortable cutting rectangles out with your rotary cutter, ruler, and mat, go for it. If you want to do this with an X-Acto knife, go for it. But I'm going to use the Cricut. We're going to start at the computer today to get an idea of how much materials we need to be able to make this adorable little mini wallet. So we need to download our file which will be a zip file. So I'm gonna go here to downloads and you can see my zip file here. Then we need to either press extract all here or wherever it shows up on your computer. This is where you can choose where it extracts. I'm just gonna let it be in the same folder just for ease. And you can see right here, it's right next to it in my downloads. And you can see the one file we need. There may be more files here when you download it, but this is the only one we need to do this project right now. But I do like putting a tester file in here and some other information about how the project's assembled. So now we're going to open up Cricut Design Space, however you get to it. We're gonna start a new project. And then we go over to Uploads, Upload Image, Browse, 
and you need to go back to that downloads folder into that and here is what we need b mini wallet card holder open and then press upload so right next to it here you can see this b this is a tester b so you can check your materials to see if it's going to actually cut well but here is what we need it's outlined with green so you're going to add that to your canvas and then we always like checking the size. Right now, it tells me that the size is six inches high. Well, I know that's not right because I know this right here should be six inches high. Sometimes Cricut Design Space just imports things at the wrong size. So in the PDF that will accompany this, it will tell you all the sizes of everything here so you can check it to make sure it's right. So when everything is highlighted here, the height should be 12.1498. You can go as far as that and it will do everything and it just truncates it, which is totally fine. Now I'm going to press ungroup and I like just checking individually. I know this is supposed to be six inches tall and right there it is. So everything got sized correctly. Now we have four different pieces here that we are cutting. I am going to zoom out to make that a little bit easier for you to see. Our zoom feature is right down here. And if it disappears on you, remember you can move these with the bars. There we go. So we have four pieces that we're working with today. This purple here is going to be our glitter white and you don't have to change the color, but some people like to just to help them understand what it's gonna be. I'm gonna turn it gray to make it easier for you to see. Now this yellow here, this is the part that actually goes behind here for the see-through. And for today, this is going to be pink. Ooh, not quite, there. well, we'll take it. These two pieces here are going to turn into the pockets. And today these are also going to be that glitter white, but you could make them anything you want. So changing the colors also will help Cricut put things together on the right boards. So now that we have these, all we have to do is press make it. Right here, you can see exactly how much fabric you're going to be needing of that white glitter. So we can cut out a piece that is 11 by 11 and everything will get cut. Or if you happen to have an awkward shaped piece, it'll fit fine right here. Um, you'll have lots of spots to put the awkwardness and plenty of room. Remember, you can move these around. If you have a piece that's a different shape, go ahead and move them and make it easier for you. And down here, we have our pink and a six by six square of our pink is all we will need. And that'll leave plenty of room there. So 11 by 11 and six by six. So now that we're here, we have the information we need about how much fabric we need, but had we made these different colors, or we're going to have the pockets out of something different, it would be a different amount of fabric we need. So that's why I like going here and getting an idea of what I need when I start. So I'm just gonna leave this here and go and get my fabric ready. So now that we know how much materials we need, I'm gonna get those cut out and prepped for the Cricut. This pink material, a six by six inch square, is all we need. I have already pressed my fabric here, and we're gonna try out some of the other materials that Everstone has sent me to try out. So we have our mat. It is pretty thick, and it has this wonderful feature of being able to fold. So if you have to put your stuff away in a small space or you travel, this is so awesome. It's basically a size of a sheet of paper, a little bit wider and it's nice and thick. So all we need is a six by six inch square of this fabric. I have their Eversewn rotary cutter and they even sent me this 
ruler. I've been using this ruler for a couple months actually, and it is such a handy size. I have no idea how I didn't have a six by 12 ruler before, but I've used this so much. Now you certainly don't have to be exact. Remember, we just need a piece that is at least six inches by six inches. But because this is a 12 inch ruler, I can really use it going either way. So watch me struggle with my brain trying to decide how I'm gonna do this. So it's six inches wide. There we go. Wow, that's a sharp blade. Okay, so we have the piece we need, and if you're going to cut this with a fine point blade, you need to bond it. So you can bond it to some freezer paper to hold it still. You don't wanna put heat and bond on this because it's going to show through those holes. So the pink is the background here, and if you put heat and bond on it, you're gonna see it through all these holes. So if you wanna use heat and bond, that needs to go on your other material. So this we need an 11 by 11 inch piece. And there was lots of extra room in one of our corners when we were looking at it. So I don't have to worry about that little cutout there. I guess I could have just turned it the other way and not moved it. That would have been smart. Super nice. Okay, we have all the materials we need. If you would like to use heat and bond and you only need to put it in the one section that's gonna cut out the main body. So I have my heat and bond on here, which is pretty much impossible to see with the white on white on white, but it is right here. And this is where I'm going to make sure that piece gets cut out. When I did my test, I also test what mats to use. So we are going to use a strong grit mat for our canvas. And I tested it with the canvas side down, and the glitter side up. The glitter just does not give our mat much to hold on to, which is why it's really not ideal to have it down. I am pretty sure that the Cricut adhesive on these mats would manage to pull some of them off. And that would just give your mat somewhat less life. So we try to keep our mats going for as long as they can. And because I did a test, I know this works. Also because the front is up, I don't have to mirror this at all because I'm cutting the way I'll be looking at it. Next up, we have our little piece of cotton. We're gonna be doing this with our rotary blade and you can use your fabric mat. This is a very new standard grip mat and it is so, so, so sticky. So I'm gonna put it straight on here. And again, I'm using the rotary blade so I don't need to bond this. If I was using the fine point blade, it absolutely needs to be bonded. So we have these ready to go. Let's head over to the Cricut and get these cut. Okay, I have everything ready to go. So we have our two mats. We have to check to make sure our mats are set up the way that it has everything. And remember, you can move stuff around if your mats do not match up. This is all set up the way my mats look like. Awesome. Press continue. So now we need to look at our materials. That first glitter canvas. So this is my Cricut materials cutting log. This is just a document I have in Google where I keep track of things I cut out. And here we have white glitter, Everstone brand. It was white and I use the bonded denim setting. And then over here, I would put whether I used more or less. And this is a spot where I write down what its actual setting is in Cricut. Now you can find that by going to browse all materials, material setting, and you can look them all up here. So it shows you for aluminum foil, you're gonna, it cuts with pressure 78. It only does it once and you want that deep point blade. So this is such a rich amount of information, 
but I actually just put it into an Excel document to make it a lot easier for myself to be able to really search for the stuff I want to and to quickly access all of this. But this is where you can find that cut pressure and how many times it cuts and what blade it wants to use. So browse all materials, search. You can just search denim or you can go to fabric, whatever works best for you. Denim bonded. And now it's ready for the first thing. And remember, we're gonna go to less this time because that cut through really well. It wants my fine point blade in there and we're ready to go. So I have a fine point blade that has a pink housing and I use it just for fabric. Just like I have scissors that are just for fabric, I happen to have a fine point blade that's just for fabric. That doesn't mean that your fine point blade that you used for paper isn't gonna work. I'm just telling you that's what I do. Real time, four minutes of cutting. Now we have our second one and I am going to change everything up because this is not bonded denim anymore. It's just a piece of quilters cotton. So we're going to go browse materials, fabric. It's kind of a big category here. Wow, look at all of that. But calico is the word we want. And as I suspected, it wants the rotary blade and that's what I wanna use. So let's go change that over and get this going. Real time cutting, 23 seconds. Everything is cut out. So let's weed it so we're ready to sew. That was easy. I'll clean that up later. Many fabrics, when you pull them off the mat, should be treated just like if you were pulling paper off a mat. You want to flip it over and release them. So now, this is what we really want to see, right? Oh, yeah. Look at that. So we have a couple of things that are stuck, but I do think that they're completely cut. And if you want to use any of these glitter bits on the inside, like I did here, you can keep them. Yeah, um, getting paper off of a strong grip mat, that's exciting. Now let's get out these last few pieces. As I said, I'm pretty sure they are cut. They just need some help Letting loose, there we go. All oh, those bees are so cute. The next step is sewing. Okay, we've got all of our materials here. We have our front, our back will be going behind it. Actually, the other way, there we go. And these two will be folded into pockets inside. And you will notice that they are not a perfect square. So the side, that is the same width as this. That is the side that's gonna go like that. So we're gonna fold them down like this. And you can crease it with your hands, add some clips, and we're gonna do a line of stitching right across the top. So again, the other one, the one that is the same width, so here it is, this is going to be what gets folded down. So first thing is we are going to sew a line of stitching across the top of each of these pockets. Just like I did here, you can be kind of far away, you can get really close to the edge, but it's just to hold this top edge stable because it's going to have cards going in and out and have a fair amount of force, so you want to make sure you have a nice edge. Okay, we need thread. I'm gonna go bold. Go bigger, go home, right? So I cheated a little. I have a different color pink in my top and my bottom, but that's okay. My machine's tension is really well adjusted, so you're not gonna see them on the top or the bottom showing through, and that way I get to pick later once I'm done. So I am just going to be using a straight stitch here along the folded top edge of the pocket and I'm extending my stitch length to 3.0, which is just kind of a better look for top stitching, but it's not you know, necessary that you do that. 
I am not generally a thread holder, but I am gonna hold the beginning of this just because I want that edge to be really nice and neat. I'm doing about a quarter of an inch from an edge, just a tiny bit more. This edge of my foot is a quarter of an inch, and I'm letting it go over just a bit. There we go. So we have this brighter pink on this side and the slightly more demure pink on the other side. Oof, it's still gonna be hard to choose. Ah! Let's take all these clips off. Next up, and perhaps a little counterintuitive, we're not doing this next. We're gonna do these next. And we need right sides together. So whatever side you like better needs to go down. These raw edges here are going to go along the bottom edge here. Now, even though I could layer everything up now, I find it easier to sew these two edges before doing anything else. Okay, so we're just going to be sewing the ends here, the open ends. So we have right sides together. So that brighter stitching is what I've gone for. That's gonna go down. I'm going to sew along this end and the other end. I am going to drop my stitch length back to 2.5, which is standard, and I want to do a proper quarter of an inch. I'm going to back stitch just a little and then head on. So I hear my needle struggling a little bit. My machine is just a tad bit louder than I would like it to be. That tells me that I should probably size up on my needle. We have these two edges sewn. This is opens up like this. So line this up. If you are doubling this with another fabric so you can get the outside and the inside to be different fabrics. The fabric that is facing up is what's going to show on the outside and facing down is what's going to show on the inside. And you will notice that it does not extend all the way here. That is on purpose. When you flip something like this inside out, there always ends up being a little extra of the lining fabric, just the way the turn of the cloth works. And it ends up getting bunchy, and it doesn't look amazing. And so by leaving this out of the ends here, you take care of that problem, and it can look a lot smoother. So it's ideal in many ways, but it can feel a little confusing. So this is literally just gets centered and make sure the width is correct. If you turn this this way, it's gonna stick off the ends here. So you want to turn it so that it is the exact same width. And now we're gonna sew this side and this side. Then we're ready to turn it. So again, we're just gonna do that quarter inch seam lining right along the edge of our foot. My needle just broke. So this is uh, my sharps container. It's a legitimate like medical sharps container, but that's because I have to check my blood sugar now. So I just ordered a couple. A Tic Tac container works or any little container that you can put the sharp bits in. Now, these are obviously not medical grade sharps, but the person who takes care of your trash doesn't know that they just got stabbed with a sewing needle and not a hypodermic needle. So for their sake, I like making sure that anything that's sharp gets disposed of in a way that it can't poke people. Much happier sewing machine. That's the difference a needle can make. So yep, these are being left open here. Leave them. Don't try to do anything with them. We have sewn all the way around. Now it's time to flip. We actually get to flip through here. We didn't have to leave an opening because there's already an opening. It's great. Before we do our flipping though, we do need to talk about these corners. This is a lot of bulk in these corners. So we need to trim diagonally on these corners. I don't want to cut this quilter's cotton because it needs the seam allowance to make sure it doesn't come out. Whereas this faux leather really doesn't need much seam allowance to be able to be stable. Okay, so instead of just cutting all of these tiny, we're going to grade our seams. The problem that exists when you have thick fabric is it creates a lump. 
Well, if you cut both of these really tiny, it's still a lump. It's just a lump a lot closer to the seam. But if you grade your seams, making one long and one short, it will help distribute that extra and create a much nicer finish. So I'm gonna grade the outside on this edge, but then we have our pockets here and you can actually grade your pocket in between those two. So it does kind of a little stair step function and it will really help spread out all of the bulk. These scissors are applique scissors or called duck bill scissors. And I really like them for getting in near the seams. They are just such a perfect shape. These are from Tula Pink. I also have Ginger ones. The Ginger ones are slightly heavier and I need to get them sharpened because I've been using them for 20 years and they're about ready to be sharpened. Yeah, 20 years. Now it's time to flip. Okay, so we reach inside here and we're gonna flip it twice. We're not gonna try to do everything on the first flip. The first flip is just going through here. Awesome, we got the first flip. So the pockets are still inside out, but the side seam here has been flipped. Wonderful. Now we're gonna flip the pockets. And that's when we have to focus on those corners. So because we already had this flipped, we can give those a nice good squish to help with the next step. You can also use something like a, a bone folder or crease marking tool just to help with these. So I like to get my finger in that corner and do all the folding that I can and then to push it. It's a lot of fabric, it's thick. And they're not gonna come out perfect to start with. We're gonna have to work on them, but it'll be worth it. We'll get there. There's so many different tools that people love to use. The important thing is to not work so hard that you end up poking through. But because this actually has a square corner. I kind of like it for these corners because I really want to push them into a square and that works pretty well. Again, go slow. You don't want to stab through the fabric on your corner. If you do, which I have many times, you will want to flip it back inside out and take a slightly deeper seam to fix what you've done. And then just turn it again and try again. It'll be okay. You can also work at them from the outside, but that is more dangerous than the inside. Sometimes you can pull them out, which is what I do with regular fabric. I've gotten pretty good at that, but you can really mar your fabric by going in here and trying to pull out the point. Look at those corners. Those corners are nice. And you see this extra fabric? That could really be rumpling up if those ends were attached. So this is perfect. It allows everything to lay flat. We're doing the top stitching around the edge now. I'm doing it about a eighth of an inch from the edge and I'm using a fancy foot that really rides the edge. It's called a knit hem edge foot or something like that, but a cording foot would work really well. And it just helps me ride the edge. You don't need a fancy foot to do this. I am just using it because I have it. And feet are fun, right? It's like power tools. Why not use them if you can? Now we're coming back around to the beginning. At the beginning, I did not do any back stitching because I am gonna cut these short. And I'm gonna overlap my stitches because I want the beginning and the end to look super neat and tidy. So I really want to line right up on those same stitches and overlap them. There we go. And then the beginning and end is just kind of a thicker spot as opposed to having like those kind of sometimes messy back stitches. Well, isn't that flashy? So I gave my wallet a press a little bit ago and now it's all cool. I put clips along this edge to help crease it. And when it was warm, that definitely helps. So it's like I use my clips as a little mini press. Super cute. Now, if you are using all quilters cotton for this, or if your fabrics are lighter weight and don't want to press, doing a single line of stitching 
along the crease does wonders. I just don't really want to do this because these look a little bit higher end and having that line of stitching just doesn't quite look right to me. So I just decided to crease these with a little heat and a little persuasion from my clips. It really turned out adorable. So if you are in love with these bee things, I have more. I have these two box pouches, um, some cards and a paper lantern. I really got into this bee theme and I hope you love it as much as I do. Check out the link below to find out where you can get these patterns. If you are watching this video in the beginning of 2022, these two box pouch patterns will be premiering as part of the Cricut Craft Fest in the later part of February. Make sure you check out the link below to find out where you can get all of these patterns and more. I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja. Have a wonderful day.